Hello everyone, in today's video we are diving into message brokers and specifically we will be exploring one of the most popular open source message brokers out there, Apache ActiveMQ. Apache ActiveMQ is a powerful and versatile messaging broker that plays a crucial role in facilitating communication between different components in distributed systems. It provides a reliable and scalable solution for building decoupled, asynchronous, and resilient applications. Before we dive into ActiveMQ, let's quickly understand why message brokers are so important in the world of software development. In a distributed system where various components need to communicate with each other, a direct and synchronous approach can lead to challenges Components might be running at different speeds, experience downtime, or having varying processing capabilities. This is where message brokers come into play. A message broker acts as a mediator, allowing different parts of a system to communicate asynchronously through messages. This not only decouples components, but also ensures more flexibility, reliability, and scalability in your architecture. Now let's talk about some key features that make Apache ActiveMQ stand out. ActiveMQ fully supports the Java Message Service, GMS API, making it seamlessly integrate with Java-based applications. It supports a variety of protocols, including OpenWire, MQTT, AMQP, and more, allowing for more interoperability with different clients and technologies. ActiveMQ offers message persistence, ensuring that messages are not lost even in the case of a system failure. It is designed to scale horizontally, allowing you to handle increased message loads by adding more broker instances. And last, ActiveMQ provides robust security features, allowing you to secure your messaging infrastructure with authentication and authorization mechanisms. Now, let's briefly explore how ActiveMQ works. At its core, ActiveMQ uses a message-oriented middleware architecture where messages are produced by senders and consumed by receivers. These messages are stored and managed by the message broker, ensuring reliable delivery and communication. If you are eager to get started with ActiveMQ, you can easily download it and install it from the official Apache ActiveMQ website. The setup process is straightforward. Okay, now we have installed ActiveMQ and we need to start it by using the ActiveMQ start command. ActiveMQ also provides a user-friendly admin console giving you insights into your messaging infrastructure and allowing for easy configuration. So once you have started ActiveMQ, you should be able to see the home page by logging into 127.0.0.1 and port 8161. And you can type in the default username and password, which is both admin. Next, we head over to queues and create a new queue where we will publish our messages and listen to any published message. In my case, I will create a queue called queue.example. Once the queue is created, you should be able to see it in this table. The number of pending messages represents the messages that have not yet been consumed. We also have the number of consumers. Messages in queued represent the number of messages that have been published to the queue since the service has started, and the dequeued number is the number of messages that have been acknowledged and deleted from the queue since the service started. Let's see a basic demo of point-to-point -point communication model, where we have a publisher and a subscriber using ActiveMQ integrated in a Spring Boot application. First of all, we need to make sure that we have the required dependencies in our POM file. So we need the Spring Boot Starter ActiveMQ dependency to work with ActiveMQ 
and have most of the GMS artifacts needed. I have also included the Spring Boot Starter web dependency because I will define a RESTful endpoint to trigger the publisher to publish messages to ActiveMQ. But in reality, a system or app could publish messages on a scheduled basis. So keep in mind this is just a simple demo, but in reality, you would see publishers and consumers in different separated domains. But for the purpose of this tutorial, those will be in the same Spring Boot project. Now as part of the configurations, we need to set up the broker URL in the application.properties file, which is by default TCP localhost and the port 61616. Then we also need to set up the username and password, which is admin for both. Alright, now let's create the actual components. First, let's create a simple class to represent the message we want to send and receive. So in the message, we define the text of the message. And of course, you can expand this if you might want to include additional fields, such as message ID, status, or any other relevant information for your application. We need the constructor and we need a getter to return the text. Okay, and now in application properties, I will also set the packages trust all to true so that the message converter can convert and serialize the message class that I created and it will not give me an exception letter that it doesn't trust this type. Secondly, let's create a message producer component to produce messages and send them to ActiveMQ. We define it as a spring component using component annotation so it should be automatically detected and registered as a bean in the Spring Boot application context. We need the GMS template class provided by the Spring framework to simplify GMS operations. It provides convenient methods for sending and receiving messages. So we can inject it into the class through the constructor. And now we create send message method that takes the message object as a parameter and sends it to the q.example destination that we have created on ActiveMQ console. It uses the convert and send method of the GMS template. This method simplifies the process of sending messages by converting the provided object, in this case, a message object to a GMS message and sending it to the specified destination. Now we create a message consumer to consume messages from the queue. We also mark this class as a spring component. Now we need a method, let's call it receive message. This needs to be invoked whenever a message is received from the q.example destination. The message parameter represents the received GMS message. So we need to define this method as a GMS message listener using the GMS listener annotation. This annotation tells Spring to register this method as a listener for messages from the specified GMS destination, which is q.example in this case. And last, we create a controller to trigger message sending. We need the REST controller annotation to indicate that this class is a controller for handling HTTP requests related to the messaging. 
we need to inject the message producer bean to this controller to allow the controller to interact with the message producer to send messages. So we need, of course, the constructor to do this. Now let's create a method for post requests to publish messages. So we need for this the post mapping annotation, which maps HTTP post requests to the publish message endpoint. And now this method is invoked when a post request is made to publish message. It expects a message in the request body as a string. We need to create a new message object using the provided message text. And then we invoke the send message method of the message producer to send a message to the GMS destination. This method returns a response entity of type string indicating the result of the operation. If successful, it returns a response with message published successfully and HTTP status OK. If an exception occurs, it returns an error response with details and HTTP status internal server error. Okay, now we can run the Spring Boot application. And we can send a POST request using Postman or any other tool. I'm using here HTTP bot. And we can type in the message body. Now you can see that the consumer has received the message. And we can also check this on ActiveMQ console. Okay, that was an example of a point-to-point -point communication model using Q. The example involved a single producer or publisher sending messages to a specific Q and a single consumer or subscriber consuming messages from that Q. But in a more complex system or application, you might have multiple producers sending messages to a queue and multiple consumers consuming messages from the same queue. However, each message sent to the queue would be consumed by only one of the available consumers. Now, for a one-to-many communication model, where a message is broadcast to multiple subscribers, you would typically use topics. In a topic scenario, a single message sent to the topic is delivered to all subscribers interested in that topic. This is a publish subscribe model, as opposite to the point to point model used with queues. Now let's see a quick demo of topics. First of all, let's create a topic on the ActiveMQ console and name it topic.example. Pretty much similar to the queue example, we also need a message producer as well as a message controller. So I've just copied them to a new package with the name topic. What we have different here is the message consumer and the GMS configuration. So let's create a GMS config class. We need to mark it as a configuration class using the configuration annotation. To indicate that this class contributes to the overall application configuration. We also need to have the enable GMS annotation to ensure that the necessary support for GMS is enabled. Now by combining these annotations, this class becomes a dedicated configuration class for GMS related beans in the Spring application. Now we create a method that defines a bean named topic listener factory. 
This returns a GMS listener container factory configured for our topics. We need a default GMS listener container factory to create a listener container. And the set connection factory method sets the GMS connection factory for this factory. And to enable the topic mode, we have the set pop sub domain set to true to enable topic mode for this listener container, indicating that it will listen for messages from topics. Okay, now we create another method that defines a bean named GMS topic template. It returns a GMS template configured for topics. And we also need to set pop subdomain to true indicating that it's intended for topic-based messaging. Now, the last step is to create the message consumers class, which will have our consumers and using the container factory that we set up in the GMS config class. This is also a component class, so we need also to put the notation here. And let's have the first subscriber with the notation JMS listener with destination topic.example that we created. And we set the container factory to topic listener factory. So here we are indicating the use of the listener container configured for topics that we set up in the JMS config class. And let's copy this subscriber to have a second subscriber. All right, now let's run the application. And then let's send a message. You will here see that both subscribers receive the same message basically copies of the original message. And we can also check this on the ActiveMQ console. So you can see we have two consumers, one enqueued message and two decued messages. Okay, thanks for joining me today. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to stay updated. See you in the next video.